second and third graders, this is Mrs. Hocken. I am going to help you with your solar system picture. Um, I have left a slideshow for Mrs. Emmons, and some of you have already seen that with me. And she's going to leave up an image of all of the planets that you have to choose from. You can choose any planet that you want from our solar system. Um, and what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to get started on your big paper. Some of you started to practice with me when I was there with you, but now we're going to get on to the real thing. So, Mrs. Emmons will have some buckets for you. I have this big Tupperware dish, but basically you're going to want to use one of those large circular items that she has available and you're going to trace it. Now, you're going to trace it with pencil, and I don't want to put it smack dab right in the middle. I want to put it off to the side a little, just to make it a little more interesting. And then I'm going to trace around it with my pencil. And ta-da! Now, depending on what planet you chose, um, you're going to be drawing some different details. Um, for example, as you, some of you remember, Mercury is very gray, it's crater-like, um, Venus is more of a cloudy planet, um, Earth obviously is going to have blues and greens and um, browns, and then uh, Mars is your red planet with some of the black um, craters and mountains, and so on and so on. So whatever planet you select, you want to start drawing in some of the um, details beforehand. Now, I demonstrated this last time I was with most of you, but I'm going to go over it again very quickly. If you choose to do a planet with a ring like Saturn, here's how you handle rings, okay? So let's say you have a circle. The rings obviously go all the way around it, but because we cannot see through the planet, you're going to only draw part of it. Some of it is going to be hiding behind it, so I'm going to draw. It's going to turn a corner and come back around the front, and then it's going to curve around, and it goes behind, but I stop because you can't see through the planet. Um, if you want to give it some width, you're going to draw another line like so. And that, my friends, is how we do it. And then, of course, we're going to erase right here. Oh, I need a better eraser. I'm going to erase those lines. Because we don't want to see right through them, okay? So you'll erase like this. Sorry about that, that eraser is not the best. So that's how we handle the ring situation. So let's say, for example, that I am going to do Jupiter. Um, Jupiter is one of the large gas giants, and if you recall, it's striped, and it has a big red spot. Uh, the big red spot somewhere down here. So I'm not going to draw every single thing, but I want to at least get some of the details on there. So I'm going to draw the circular um, motion around the storm. And then I'm also going to slot in where some of the stripes will go. Because it has these beautiful rings of cloud and storm that go around it. Okay, once I have the general drawing of where my items and things are going to go, then I pick out my colors. Again, that's going to be different for each planet. So this particular planet, I'm going to be picking like some rusty browns, light browns, some orangish colors, obviously a red for the red spot, and then some of those clouds are kind of a creamy color, um, you know, almost white, not quite white, but sort of a creamy color. So I'm going to start with these colors. And I think I'm going to start with my big red spot. 
and I'm gonna color it in. Now, the thing that's important is anywhere on your planet, even the areas that you want to stay white need to get colored with oil pastel because what we're gonna do after we color in the planet and add some stars with oil pastel is you are going to paint outer space with black paint. And, and we don't want the black paint to cover up any of our planet. So everything on the planet has to get colored. Now I generally start by just putting some of the colors on. And some of them are, I want to color it in solid. And it doesn't have to be a complete solid color. Some of these I can add some of the cream color over it and it blends it really nicely because it's not always just one flat color. So sometimes I like to do a little mixing to make it look blended and softer. And then this particular area is more of one of those creamy striped areas. So what I generally do when I'm blending these is I usually put down some of the darker colors first and then go over them with the creamier, lighter colors. So I'll go ahead and do some of that. And I'm also going to incorporate some of the lighter colors with this some of the tans so that it's not all exactly one color. All right, my friends, so now that I have shaken off all the shavings, the next thing I'm gonna do is show you how to give your planet um, a little depth. So right now it's round, but it doesn't necessarily look, uh, look spherical, like a three-dimensional um, ball. So that's what we're gonna try to achieve next. The first thing we need to do in order to give it that depth one side is going to be lighter and the other is going to, um, and that means highlights are going to be shining on it, and the other side is going to have a shading or shadow. So we have to decide which direction our sunlight is coming from. So if I decide my light is coming from this side, this will be the light side of my planet. This will be the part that's in shadow. So this part is going to be a little brighter around this outside edge. And I'm just going over this area with a creamier, lighter color just to make it look a little lighter. Okay, and then... And I also want to make sure that I didn't leave any parts out on my planet meaning that there's no white paper spots because I don't want those to get covered uh, with black when we do that part of it. So I've kind of created a lighter side. Now I'm gonna give it a little darker and shading because if the sun is coming from this direction, it's hitting this side and this side is not getting as much of the sunlight. So I'm not necessarily going to take a black to start. I'm going to take one of the colors that's in the planet, one of the darker colors. Like if this planet were blue, I would use a darker blue over here. But since I was using these yellows and rust colors, I'm going to use a rust color. And I'm going to just go along this side of the planet until I get towards the bottom. 
and notice that I don't go a long ways, just an inch or so in. And then I can make this a gradual transition into that rust by going over it with one of my lighter colors just to help blend that. Then I can get a darker brown and put that closer to the edge. Not covering all the way over that color I just did. And then on the very edge of my planet, I can use some black. And because that black is so extreme and dark, I'm just going to go over the black a little bit with the brown. And then it blends with it and makes it look a little more like a gradual shade instead of a hard solid black line. So now, one side of my planet looks like it's on the, on the dark side and it's shaded. And the other side is a brighter and lighter side of the planet. So you can go ahead and try some shading. And again, it's a balance of lighter and darker colors um, going over each other so that it looks a little more gradual and not all at once. Once you've created a lighter side and a darker side, then you can add the stars. Okay, and for the stars, we're basically, um, and I, it looks to me like I need to get some shavings off my paper. Let me take care of that first. Put those in the garbage. Now I can work on adding some stars. Now I don't think that we have a specific color that your stars have to be, but I would put, pick a very light color, like a white or a, um, a creamy color like this, or maybe a yellow. But you don't want something any darker than that because you really want them to show up. And what I'm going to do is just make some spots. Oops. Some of them will be close together. Some of them, some of them will be farther apart because um, stars are not, you know, perfectly placed in a pattern. They're very random. So I'm going to have some bigger ones, some smaller ones, some clustered together, some spread out. I want to make sure I leave a really good dot because when I paint over them with black, I definitely want them to show up and to stay put. So I've picked my one planet and colored it in really nice and solid. And then I did my highlighting on one side, my shading on other, on the other side, and then my stars. So the next step will be to add the deep dark space in the background. Okay, now that I have finished with the stars, I'm gonna need water, the brushes, and your paints. Now some of these trays have black on them, some of them do not, but Mrs. Emmons will have some individual cups with black in it for those of you who don't have them on your tray. So let's take a look at how this works. First of all, I'm gonna make sure to use quite a bit of water because if I do too much paint and not enough water, it will cover my stars and my planet. So I'm gonna start with quite a bit of water and you'll see that when I do that, it does not stick to my planet. And it just rolls right off my stars. And again, that has to do with the fact that I've had enough water in my paint and I made a nice, solid, bold, colored in planet and stars. Now, sometimes I like to add some blue to my black and that can make a really beautiful space color. So it doesn't have to be just plain black. So when I add 
a little bit of blue to that black. It makes it a little richer, a little deeper. And so now, as I paint around my planet and my stars, it's really starting to look like I am a deep, uh, deep in space here. Much better than when it's just white. So I'm going to continue like this. And if there are areas that I used too much water and I want to go back over a little bit like that, I can. But I don't want to go over the paper again and again because you're going to wear a hole right through it. So once I've gone over an area once, or at the most, twice, I probably need to just let it be. Because if I put too many coats on, I'm going to go right through my paper. So here we go. And... Of course, I don't want any white spaces left on the paper. And when you get done, you can raise your hand and Mrs. Emmons will come and get your wonderful creation and we will put it on the drying rack. Then, of course, you need to go take care of your brush, your water, and your paints for her so that you're not leaving a mess. And that, my friends, is how you paint your favorite planet from the solar system. Enjoy. I can't wait to see what you come up with. I'll be back the last week of April. Have a good time and be sure to help Mrs. Emmons out. I told her that you folks are very helpful and responsible and I know you're going to do a great job.